Okay, to make a 99% confidence interval for this information, we got to know a few things. First of all, can we do it? Is it random? Somewhere does it say simple random sample? Yep, SRS. Uh, two, make sure that we did this NP. It doesn't tell me that my data is approximately normal, so I need to double check, will it be approximately normal? And that's this normal condition. Are both of these, the product of both these, greater than or equal to 10? So I took 102 pennies, and my proportion is 57 over 102. And I could divide that out. And I believe I'm going to get 57. So that's going to work. I want to also do the opposite. 102. 57 over 102 would be 45 over 102. Both of these should work. And the third one was the 10% rule. You want a big sample, but you want to make sure that it's not too big so that you account for, you have to account then for independence. Now we can assume independence as long as it was a big jar of pennies. We took an SRS of 102 pennies. Um, in this problem, I don't give you a ton of information. It should say somewhere, let's add someone, somewhere from a large container of pennies. You'll receive that information. Then pretty much you're supposed to assume that you've got 10% or less counted when you do 102. Um, but a lot of times you'll see in the problems they've been saying like from an extremely large container of pennies or from the population of all adults in the United States. Uh, let's see, 99% confidence interval. So to review how you solve that, we've got one standard deviation from the mean is 68%, two is 95, three is 99.7. So we're gonna be finding what's a little before that third standard deviation and a little before there. We only want the middle 99% interval. So technically there's 0.5% this way, 0.5% this way. So we need some um, z-scores from our table to figure out if your probability is um, all the way at 0.5 all the way up here, technically it would be 0.91295. You're looking for the z-score of it. So look in your table. I believe when I did the z-score for this, 2... Point five. It was really between 5.7 and 5.8, so I put 5.75 for that one. And you also want to find the probability 0 0.005, this low end number over here, and it seems like it always works out where it's the negative version of that number. Um, in order to find the z-score, we got to actually find, we know that the middle is the mean, and that is 57 out of 102. I think that works out to like 0 0.5588, so 0 0.5588 is right in the middle. We want to figure out what number value is here, not at 99.7, we want just 99%. So we have to rely on the z-score and the table to figure this out. We can't do it like that easy shortcut way because we don't have this one memorized. Um, let's see. So we're going to take our mean, and it's 
0.5888 and we want to add to it this one out here was 2.575 times the standard deviation. We don't want a full three standard deviations, we want 2.575 standard deviations, which leads us to finding the standard deviation then. Uh, this is 0 0.5588, then this one is 0 0.4412. 102 we're sampling. Feel free to pause this if I'm going too fast. I've done my math ahead of time too so that I can keep this moving. But pausing it is not a bad idea. I'm just going to go double check that one real quick. So I want not three standard deviations, that would be 99.7, that middle 99.7. I want 99%, so I need 2.575 standard deviations. So I need to put the standard deviation in there. And I get 5588 plus 0.1. there. So this is my upper end of my interval. My lower end of my interval is where I got to do the same math, except I take away 2.575 standard deviations. we're getting good at. We also can interpret it. The true proportion, uh, we are 99% confident that the true proportion will lie in the interval 0 0.432 to 0 0.685. What is the margin of error within this problem? The margin of error is basically this portion here. When you did 0 0.5588 plus it's this portion right here so the margin of error in this formula I believe that on the formula sheet they've got this whole thing kind of written out for you and it's got the end part after the plus and minus it says critical value times standard deviation of the statistic, that is your margin of error. Uh, and it starts with that plus or minus, and before it, it has your proportion or your parameter, or it has your statistic. It's the second portion, your margin of error. So once you calculate, there's not any extra work really to do to find your margin of error. Um, a lot of people would say that if your margin of error is 0 0.126597, they would say it's about 12.6% or 12.7%. So when you look at the next problem, how many pennies must we sample to have a margin of error of only 5%? So we want that margin of error to go down smaller. We've got to sample more. So all we're really caring about is we want this critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic to be equal to 
zero five. Right now it's equal to point one two six five nine seven. So we want it to be only five percent. What things can change? Let's look back up to the problem up over here. How we got that critical value was 2.575 times 0 0.049. The critical value cannot change. We're still finding a 99% confidence interval. So this critical value has to remain the same. And I'm going to use the positive value. Standard deviation is the only thing that can change. When you look at what we made that standard deviation up to be, we were calculating it with P, Q, and N. When I look at the problem, I can't change my sample. So I'm still going to have my P be 0.5588, and therefore my Q has to be 0 0.4412. Divide by, and the question is saying, how many pennies must we sample? So this N is the only thing that really can change within this problem. So to be able to solve something like this, I probably would first chip away and get rid of this 2.575 by dividing both sides by it. And then I would be left with 0.5588 times 0.4412 over N equals and some math that I did was I got 0 0.019. So double check that you're getting that math when you do that. I have a square root on one side. I, I want to kind of get rid of it so that I can get n to, my, to itself. So if I square both sides, then I'm going to end up with, let's flip the page. Point five five eight eight point four four one two, and then I have point oh one nine squared, which I thought was that when I solved it, and this is over n still. So slowly trying to chip away and figure out what needs to be. Um, for this one, you could obviously multiply by n on both sides. You could cross multiply. A lot of different ways to do it. I'm going to finally do some of this math. I think that works out to 2, 4, 6, 5, 4, 3 equals 3, 7, 7, and really just becomes an algebra type problem. And I'm going to get around 654. So my answer should be six hundred and fifty four pennies. Okay, those are the ones we'll be trying next.